Hey, welcome to the program today. I got a verse for you, and then we'll get the, the show going here. I'm going to read Acts chapter six, verse uh, Acts chapter one, verse six. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, "Lord, wilt thou at this time return again the kingdom to Israel?" That's an interesting passage there, and we could talk about that. But uh, I want you to see that uh, the apostles had questions, and there's nothing wrong with questions. Questions are a good thing. Mm -hmm. In today's program, we're going to deal with some questions. We're going to deal with some topics that some of you out there in our audience have sent to us and let us know you'd like for us to deal with. And we're going to do that in the show today. I think you're going to enjoy it, so stand by. And welcome everybody to the show, Props in the Spotlight. I'm Brother Dan Goodwin. Sitting here is the great Dr. Jo jo Dr. Charles Hiltabittle. And uh, um, Doc, uh, we did a live show um, just, I think last night, I did a live show on YouTube. Folks, you, if you're watching by television, you ought to check out YouTube. All of our programs that you like the one you're watching right now are on YouTube as well as some 15-minute uh, clips and some live streams. You're missing a lot if all you're getting is the TV show. Now, I realize some of you that are watching via the television, some of you don't have Internet, I understand. But many of you do, and you ought to take advantage of uh, the many shows that are there. Uh, I did a live stream last night, and uh, I, all I did was I came on. I said, uh, folks, we're going to the studio tomorrow. Tell me some topics that you would like for Doc and I, give us a topic for a TV program. And boy, did I get some talk. I got, I got 12, I think we got about 15 things, Doc, <laughs> that the, the people started. I mean, good stuff too, good topics. Sure. Uh, um, and well, I there's said, not anything that's not good. People say, well, my question don't make any sense. If you've got a question, there are other people got the same question. Yeah. Now, we try to keep stuff prophecy related, yes. obviously. And uh, we had a couple of questions that uh, I felt you know, really weren't, in our little, in our gender here. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, but I thought instead of just doing a show on one, on their topic, let's, let's just hit a bunch of them because some of them you can deal with. We're going forward, minutes. we're going. And, and that's uh, it. And I think this is going to be off the cuff for both of us because I didn't even, I didn't you tell didn't you. You didn't tell what me. Because I don't know what we're going to do. I'm just going to look at the paper and start looking at uh, uh, yeah. things here. The first one I want to hit on wasn't the first one given to us. But I already have it open. And by the way, folks, if you don't have this book, some of the topics we're going to discuss that people asked us about are right here in this book called Bible Prophecy Terminology. This is the only book that Doc and I did together. And uh, it, I, I think it's a great book. Uh, when you go to the beginning of the book, there's a the table of contents here. And it's continued on the next page because there are quite a few little chapters here. Some of them are only a couple pages. Some of them are more. Uh, it's the table of contents in alphabetical order. So the first one on the list is abomination of, de of desolation. And it just so happens that's the last one in the book. <laughs> and you did this one, Doc. This was yours. That was one of the questions somebody wanted to know. And uh, let's see, where was that? Who was it that asked that? Um, not seeing it here. This is probably on the other page, but um, let me see if it's over here. There it is. And I didn't write down who it was, so, <laughs> so all that for nothing. Uh, somebody asked, what is the, the abomination of desolation? Well, it has to do with the temple and daily sacrifices. Um, the sacrifices is called oblations. And the Bible says the oblations will cease because of the desolation that's coming. That, that's going to take place at the middle of the tribulation mm -hmm. when the Antichrist, uh, the devil is going to be kicked out of heaven. You, you find that in chapter 12. And I think then in chapter 13, he's going to fully empower the, uh, uh, the Antichrist uh, and he's going to declare himself to be God. And so the, the desolation is whenever the Holy of Holies is replaced uh, with the, an image of the Antichrist. 
and the oblations will cease because he says, I'm God, so there's no longer any need for you to bring me. Now, you need to understand that's telling us that there will be another temple built because you couldn't have this event happen right. if there was not a third temple for the tribulation. Yeah. And we're hearing a lot today about the rebuilding of a third temple. Yeah, and the red heifers is a pretty the big deal. The red heifer is part of that. They're getting ready right now. I don't know when. It, it was in the next couple of weeks or Passover so. Passover or beyond, they said. Somewhere yeah. in the next two or three weeks, maybe a month at the most, they're going to they're gonna sacrifice a red heifer. And that's necessary, uh, both the blood and the ashes. The blood is necessary for the dedication and the sanctification setting aside the temple and vestments and instruments and all of that. The ashes are necessary for the purification of the believers uh, that's going to participate. So the desolation of abomination has to do with a third temple being built and the Antichrist then in the middle of tribulation declaring himself to be God, putting a stop to the daily sacrifices, and as a result, that's called the desolation. Yeah. And I looked up desolation in Webster's 1828 <clears throat> Dictionary. Um, the act of desolating or destruction or expulsion of inhabitants. Mm -hmm. Destruction, ruin, waste. Yep. Um, every kingdom divided <clears throat> against itself is brought to desolation. Matthew 12, just as an illustration yep. he gives here. Mm -hmm. Uh, a place deprived of inhabitants or otherwise wasted, ravaged, or ruined. That's what Desolation's a bad thing. It is. And, and coupled with what I just said a while ago, the middle of the tribulation, that's when, that's when Matthew chapter 24 falls in, when he says, when you see this happen, you don't well, even go back that, in the house I, to get I, anything. That's right here on the page that you wrote. Matthew 24, 15, and 16. Where, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation... Spoke and then in parentheses spoken of, uh, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. In other words, so he's quoting from Daniel yes. eleven here. Yes. Uh, the arms shall stand against his part. They shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. Yep. There it is. And uh, it's another verse mm -hmm. in chapter nine that talks about the oblation to cease nine twenty seven and. and of course, we know this is the middle of the tribulation. Uh, even, even Paul writing in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2 puts this in that order. But when this happens, Dan, that, that's the moment that the Jews that are living in Israel have to run for their lives because yep. here, comes the, here comes the Antichrist crowd to kill them. Yeah, and, and I believe he's going to kill them because the 144,000 just got saved. Yes. And they've been redeemed. They're the first and, fruits unto God. And I think it's probably about the same time that the resurrection of the slain th uh, two witnesses. Yeah. I, I mean, there's a lot taking place at this time, yeah. and the and the Antichrist is going to say, "Look what I've just done," and yeah. and then he's going to come against God with everything he can. I wonder if he realizes that he he just committed a boo boo. Yeah, <laughs> he, 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 he just, just signed his he death just, warrant. He just awoke a, a, a sleeping lion yes. there. Um, all right, so let's let's go to another one. Genders was mentioned by uh, Miss Esther on the program. What was that again? She asked, "Where did the where did the genders, genders. first begin taught?" And you surprised me yeah. before the show. I was yeah. asking about this. Well, first of all, genders started in Genesis in the week of creation. God made the man, and God made Male the woman. Male and female. Uh, I mean, there's your two. There's your two genders. Amen. There there are no other genders. And what she's okay. asking is, where did all these yes. other gender? When did it originate? Right. Who started this? On this side of the flood, at Babel, it started with the gods, false gods, and the false gods originally were transgender individuals. In other words, they were both male and female. Later, they came a supposedly a split, and you had the male and the female, like through the time of uh, 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 Babylon, uh, uh, under... Uh, uh, what was his name? <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. You find on one side of the river, a mile apart, you find an arch or a gateway uh, to the female god. And on the west side, uh, you have, the, or on the east side, you then had the guy, uh, the one for the Marduk, the male. And so, 
They all started out. And so transgenderism that we're seeing today is nothing but a resurgent of the movement of Mystery Babylon in the end times for the tribulation. And you know, I never thought of it this way before until before the show I mentioned this to you because mm -hmm. I didn't, some of these I didn't want, I didn't want to throw at you without giving you some warning and this was one of them. And you just jumped right out. Oh, I, I'll tell you where that started. And yeah, I was, absolutely. I wasn't expecting that. That's good. That's just more proof of the the fact that the end times is is Babylon re oh, yes. power. Absolutely. And, and this mindset of transgenderism um, is is really not new, but we're seeing a re resurgence of that because the world is getting ready for the tribulation period. And if you've read chapter 17 and 18 of the book of Revelation of Mystery Babylon, this is one of the trademarks of the of the worship of actual mysteries of Babylon in its original days. Okay. All right. So I hope that helps you, Esther. We, we don't want to spend too much time on this, but, but I think the important thing is in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, yeah. male and female created he then. In everything. God, God gave in the everything. genders right yes. there. Because uh, God designed it so that between those two combinations, uh, uh, that species was able to carry on. Uh, but we need to understand this transgender thing that we're dealing with right now is actually a part of setting the stage for the tribulation. It's a part of that mindset of being able to believe the great deception. Yeah. And boy, I mean, I think we've said this before, but it's already begun. Yes. Uh, um, I mean, it's going to be worse at the rapture. It's going to be, I saw an article yesterday, Dan, that supposedly, I don't know how they get these figures, but anyway, is it Gen Z or Gen, I don't know, whatever, generation whatever they want to call it, 30%, I think they're talking about the, the younger generation, 30% of them claim to be somehow or another involved in a transgender situation. Yeah. Now that can only happen because of a demonic oppression that's coming upon the world. And I'll tell you this too, um, people don't realize this is coming through the schools. Oh yes. Absolutely. No, no kid just suddenly realized, you know no. what, I think, I, I think I'm a boy. Uh, yeah. or, you know, uh, well, you know, I mean, even growing up, we, we had girls that we called them tomboys, but they never, they, they never thought they were boys. Right. They just knew they were girls that liked to do some things that boys do. Yeah. Uh, it didn't mean that they were wanting to be so. But today, oh my goodness. It, yeah. it's, it's being pushed and pressured through the school system. Yeah. And Not the, all the teachers, but a lot of the teachers are in on this and are oh, promoting yes. it, pushing Be, it. Because it's the woke thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, well, yeah. and then they've got some people that uh, have been like that guy that won a gold medal who now thinks he's a woman. I don't remember. Anyway, uh, they've got these different people and they've got people in the, in the Hollywood crowd. You put that together with the, with the, as Rush Limbaugh said, a, 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 a skull full of mush. And it's not too hard through the educational system yeah. to produce what we're now facing. Well, with that in mind, I, there's, a, there's a quote. I won't get it right, but the quote is something like this. If you, uh, why would you think that you, why, why are you upset when you send your child to Caesar's school and he comes back as a Roman? I mean, <laughs> that's what happens. Yep. Um, my kids, I got five children. They never stepped one. They never spent one day in the public school. I call them government schools. That's what they are. Yeah. Oh, your poor children. And they must be so uneducated. You know, they used to say, <laughs> you, you, you homeschool your kids. What's going to happen to them later? Yeah. Our kids still know what men and women are, <laughs> the difference in men, men and women. Oh, uh, uh, you know, we had a Supreme yeah. Court justice that said she's not They a, don't even know. She said, I'm not a biologist. I, don't, I can't tell a woman from a man. Now the lady should have asked another question. Are she you said, a mother? Are you a, are you a, are you are a, you woman? a mother? <laughs> yeah. But uh, oh, it's 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 it's. I'll tell you the one thing that keeps going through my mind is that that fairy tale about uh, it's a Hans Christian Andersen, I think, the one about the the emperor has no clothes, oh. and yeah. famous fairy tale from years ago. Yeah. And uh, boy, there's truth to that. No, it, it, he he had no clothes on. Nobody would say it. Everyone knew it, but nobody would say it. No one would believe it. Yeah. Until this little boy at the end, the little boy said, you ain't got no clothes on. It took a little kid <laughs> to wake everybody up. And but that's where America's at today. Transgenderism 
of today is another one of the signs that we're at the end of this age because it's a part of setting up yeah. for a great delusion of the tribulation. Well, get ready, Don. I want you to tell the folks about the need, uh, the, the bill coming due okay. in about two weeks. But before I do that, Esther, thank you, Esther, for that. Uh, um, I'm glad you asked that question now. I didn't know how we were going to handle that at first, but I think we did good on that. I think, we'll, I think we've helped some people with that. So, Doc, before we go to our next one, uh, why don't you uh, tell the folks th about the need coming up in a couple well, of weeks? Just in a couple of weeks, our bill, we pay our bill ahead of time. Uh, we pay three months at a time. That gives us a discount. Uh, Dan's been good at being able to deal with the people about this, and, and we appreciate them giving us that break uh, yep. to do that. But it's due, and we could sure use any help. Um, send us whatever God would lay on your heart. You can send it either a check or or on the phone or just get on the just get on the internet and and do it right yep, there. Those donate buttons, right donate on the page. button, and and there are people that give to us uh, on monthly a, yep. on a regular basis. And God bless you. We could not be here going in our fourth year without you doing what you've been doing. Because we started with nothing, we about have nothing after we yep. get through paying this month, and it's because of you people. Thank you very much. Yep. All right, Aaron Fletcher uh, suggested we do a show about, he said, you always talk, talk about Genesis 6, what it doesn't mean. Can you do, can you tell the people what Genesis 6, 6 does mean? We're talking about the sons of God, the oh, daughters yeah. of men. And by the way, he went on to say that he agrees with us. Sure. He's not just trying to cause trouble. Mm -hmm. But he says sometimes we we, we we tell everybody what it's not, but but can, can that's you because share a we, little? That's because we're always approaching it from uh, from Matthew chapter twenty four, Luke twenty one. Uh, okay, chapter number six, t first verse of chapter number six. Go back to chapter number three and take the last verse of chapter three and put the first verse of chapter six together, and you have the narrative. Chapter four and five is interserved stuck in there between almost parenthetical to show you that in spite of how things are going to end up from chapter three to chapter no matter how that's going to end up chapter number four is going to tell you how it gets there by the unrighteous people chapter five shows you the lineage of people and how that you can live righteously in spite of an unrighteous world. But it shows you, I believe, by the time you get to chapter 6, exactly where we are today. We hit this, I believe, a while ago in our, our update. Uh, people think that Christianity is going to finally get so good, it's going to, it's going to bring the world together, and Christ is going to, going to come. That's not the case, because just like it was in the days of Noah, it got worse and worse and worse until God said, I'm not going to let it go any further. Yeah. And then God steps in. And so chapter 6 tells you the condition that has finally gotten there uh, from verse number, from the last verse of chapter 3. It tells you now from that moment you have now gone 1,500 plus years. And it shows you how things fall apart in that time. And so the sons of God is obvious. We know that from the Bible's definition. It's talking about the believers. Yeah. And I believe we find in the New Testament very clearly, as well as we find in the Old Testament, the instruction that you're not to marry the unbeliever. But here's what they were doing. They were marrying unbelievers. In other words, the sons of God represent... Believers. Say, believe, believers, saints, yes. the saints. Mm -hmm. the, and the daughters of men, the reason he says it different is they're not children of God, they're, not they're daughters of men. That's right. And, and because you've got to go all the way back again to chapter number three, and in chapter number three, you get to the end of it, what do you get? You get to the judgment of God. Now, some people say, and, I, and I'm not sure that I agree with it, I think I can see both sides, but I lean towards believers and non believers, mm -hmm. not the line of Seth or the line of Cain. No, no. No, because... Uh, and we get accused of saying, well, the sons of God no. is the line of, of Seth and the daughters we, of men we, are the line of Cain. We follow chapter number five, which is the sons of Seth. Yeah. 
Yeah. But it is demonstrating believers. Does that mean that everybody in everybody's family was a believer? No, I doubt of course it. Not. Just because in our world today, uh, there are a lot of born again families that don't have all their children that are born again. Only eight on the ark. So there's a lot more sons of daughters of Seth than or that's than, right. You know, sons of Seth. And than they, that. It got down to only those eight. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, no, it's talking about believers. Uh, John chapter 1, you know, uh, verse 11 and 12. Uh, uh, it, to those that believe on the name of the Son, gave you power to become the sons of God. And yeah. so it is a matter, chapter 6 is showing you how the world from chapter number 3 1,500 years later, got to the condition it was in, and uh, because the righteous line will never overrule the unrighteous line, because the unrighteous line is the seed of the devil from chapter 3, and this world is under the power and control of the devil. Yep. The righteous will never overrule the unrighteous and, in this present world. And doctors, one more solid proof about Genesis 6 mm -hmm. being saved people and lost people intermarrying, bringing upon God's judgment. Right. And that's the story of Balaam and, and Balak, right? Yes. And yeah. finally at the end, he didn't want to curse God's people, but finally at the end he told, is it ba Balak? Barak. It's confusing because their yeah. names are almost the same, but Balaam, oh, yeah. he, 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 didn't, he didn't curse God's people, but he told Ba Balak, whatever his name is, he told him how to defeat Israel. Yep. Send them your daughters, intermingle with them, yep. intermarry, and you'll destroy and, them. And that's why when you get to the book of Jude, <laughs> this is one of those that's brought up it's called in the, the book sin of Jude. Of ba or the error of Balaam. Because the error of Balaam is not understanding Israel's place in God's plan. Yeah. And they intermarried, and it and it and it, yes. brought, it brought in sin. It brought, it brought in, in the destruction, idolatry, and all yep. the stuff. Solomon did yep. the same thing. And people say, well, "Why would God tell them Joshua to go in and 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 just slay them all?" It's because what you're watching even right now with this uh, uh, has Hamas bunch over there. They're ingrained from the time they're nursing on their mothers uh, the hatred of Israel. And in those days, they were ingrained from the moment of birth all the way through to the diehard worship of some false god. Doc, did you hear the speech from Senator Schumer? I'm telling you, he, needs, think it was today he needs to be censured. Unbelievable. He needs to be censured. He trashed Netanyahu, the president, yes. the, the duly the elected president yes. of Israel. He needs censured. Yeah. Uh, but New York will never replace him yeah. because they're they're not any better than he is. So. And uh, you know we're liable to suffer the wrath oh, of God. Oh, we're already <laughs> suffering it, Dan. Now we're not going to do this one, but this is a good one. I, I want, so I want to throw it out there for us to think about for the future. Yeah, because we don't have a five minutes left. We were asked. He, he, he suggested we do a a Christian book recommendation. That may be five books each, and talk a little bit about each yeah. of those books. Well, that need a little time on yeah. that. So but that, but that's 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 well, what our to, audience brings us. This is good stuff. Go to my bookstore, and you'll find it there. You won't find it in Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I could, after you get done, uh, his, come to my amen. bookstore, and I'll correct I'm all these errors. I'm feeling a little bit better, folks. <laughs> amen. Well, I'm giving you plenty of time to talk today, so <laughs> we get you. Now, here's the tough. Now, I should have told. I should have mentioned this to you before we started, because this this is a. This is one that I haven't totally decided on. And, and it's really, I guess it is, about, it is a prophecy thing, but not a big prophecy thing. And it's about the kingdom. And I bet you've heard this before, Doc. Uh, Van from Pennsylvania, our good friend up there, he said, could you discuss the difference in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven? How many times have you got that question? Once in a while you get it. And... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll tell you real quickly what my... There's a third one that goes with that that right, people well, don't think about. Well, well, let's not go to that one then. But no, it's the family of God. Okay, it's family of God. Yeah, I, mean, I understand that one. Um, I, I, I haven't done it in a long time, but I'm pretty sure in the years ago I did a little study on it where you go to the same passage in Matthew you'll find in Luke or mm -hmm. Mark. Mm -hmm. In one passage it'll say kingdom of heaven. You go to the other book, the same story... And it'll say kingdom of God. Or kingdom. So I kind of think they could be interchangeable, but I could be wrong. Okay. Of course, anybody that's born again is in the family of God. In the Hiltabittle family, 
there's a whole lot of the Hilton Middle family that's already died in this world and are in heaven. Yeah. I have, uh, I think the youngest one, just a little over one year, a grandchild. These are all in the family. Some are in heaven, some are here. So the family of God is different. And this is where a lot of people call it the church when it's really the family. Oh, right. The Bible is clear that the kingdom of God right now, the kingdom of God is in you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God you are sealed with. The kingdom of heaven, I believe, is future whenever all of us are together in the future in the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. Because right now, the Bible is clear that right now the kingdom of God is in you. And, uh, uh, but there's a time coming when everybody that's born again, every believer from Adam on, is going to be a part of the kingdom of heaven and that's coming. And I think coming. that might be the rapture. It could well be. The bodily yes. resurrection. Yes. That's the first time yep. everyone's part everybody's of the Everybody's going to be moment. together. Yes. Not everybody's in the church. And that's why if you study uh, the word ecclesia in your Bible, church, uh, translated church, uh, uh, out of the 118 times, uh, only three have nothing to do with a local independent yeah, the group. The church of the firstborn is one of them. Yeah, because it's about it's, the church as it is the, in heaven. The church of the firstborn is tied with the family of God. A and these are tied with the kingdom of heaven to come. Yeah. And, that, and back to that family thing, and I'm glad you brought it up. Um, you have to be born. I, I had to yes. be born into my family. Absolutely. My, my mother had me uh, That's right. March 5th, 1960. Yeah. I was born into the human race. Amen. I realized I was alive for nine months before that, but... Uh, and it's the same thing. That's why Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again right. to get into this kingdom. Absolutely. Just like you're born into the family of humans, yeah. I have to be born into the family of God. And, and, and a lot of people today, and maybe we ought to do a show sometime on it, but there are a lot of people today that use the word church. And it kind of grates me uh, because I know the church in the Bible is always a local assembly. And they use the word church, not realizing they are really talking about the family of God, yep. and they're not the same. Right, exactly. All right, well, we're out of time. Let me just uh, share a few of these we're going to hit on yeah. maybe next week. I'm not sure. Marsha wants us to talk about the flat earth and stuff. Uh, I call it the flat earth nonsense. It's pretty flat. And we, uh, we may talk about that. Um, and I can't read my writing. Oh, uh, signs that we should be looking out for. Esther, again, asked that. Uh, we may look at that. Um, somebody asked that we, we talk about creation a little bit, and uh, we can do that. Um, the spirit of fear and anxiety that people are having in the last days. Let, let's hit on that Well, that would be a good one because I can answer that question. You can too. Okay. Well, and, time's uh, out, my and, goodness. And there's a few more, but we're out of time. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you next time. Keep your eyes on them skies.